Welcome to a Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild and this is part 6. Painting, sanding and slow motion experiments. The order's a bit strange I know. I'm painting first. I'm going to paint the plumber blocks which hold the bearings that support the crankshaft and the beam. Normally on a Stuart Models Beam Engine these parts are made from gun metal but in this case they're made from steel and they clamp down on phosphor bronze bushes. At least I hope they're phosphor bronze. Brass is not a good bearing material. I need to dismantle them, clean them up and paint them. I'm not going to spray them, although I suppose I could do. But it's cold in the outer part of the workshop where I do the spraying, so I thought just for a change I'll sit in the warmer part of the workshop and use a paintbrush. If you've been following the series called My New Workshop, where I show how I built a new workshop at the new place where I live, and by the word building, I don't mean actually building the building, I just mean making a metal workshop inside an existing building that needed some attention. One of the first things I did though was to get air conditioning fitted for two reasons. One reason being I'm fat and hairy and I overheat badly in summer. So the air conditioning will keep me cool. And a great bonus with this aircon unit is it also acts as a heater. It sort of runs in reverse. And even if it's sub-zero outside, it will still extract some heat from the atmosphere and pump it into my workshop. But if I'm in the outer part of the workshop, with the door closed and the outer door open, it's very cold. So I very quickly went into the outer part of the workshop, painted this part of the engine and brought it back inside where it's warm. One of my regular viewers is a man called Norman, and Norman sends me things from time to time, and this is one of the things that he sent me. These are really useful things to have in your workshop. And here you can see just one application of the storage containers. And now an application using more than one storage container, putting each bearing and its respective parts in its own container, that way I cannot get them mixed up. Thank you Norman for making my life simpler. These are the plumber blocks and bearings for the main beam. As you can clearly see from this close-up image, these are not precision parts. Really, they should be, but they're not, so time will tell whether these parts are successful. What I'm doing at the moment is brushing them with some etching primer. And after each of the bearing assemblies are painted, they go into the storage boxes so I don't lose them. And now, braving the low temperature, I'm in the outer part of the workshop and I'm sanding the base. This is the base that I had shot blasted, painted and filled with JB Weld in the last episode. 24 hours later and the JB Weld is fully cured and all I need to do is just smooth it off a little bit more before we go into a painting frenzy on this as well. A lot of it is handwork. This is the end and I can't really get in properly on the belt sander. It's too easy when using a belt sander to accidentally sand grooves in the metal so I think it's a safer method using a piece of very coarse sandpaper held in my hand. It's much easier to get into the corners and get a good finish this way. For instance, in this area, I just wouldn't want to use the belt sander because I would cut a groove in the top of the base and then it wouldn't look very good at all. I use my 4-inch belt sander upon which the part is currently rested, although it's not on as you can see, for sanding edges of pieces of metal, edges of bases like this, and edges of pieces of wood or anything that's nice and flat. But in my workshop, I still use files and coarse emery cloth like this. I gave the base an all-over sanding treatment then I blew off the dust with the airline, and now it's ready for painting. Even though there isn't too much bare metal showing, there is some bare metal showing, so I'm still using etching primer. I want this paint to firmly stick to this part. It's a bit cold for painting, so as soon as I finish painting this, I'm going to take it into the warmer inner part of the workshop. I just need to ensure that I get full coverage without any drips, runs or sags. And once again the base is on two pieces of wood which makes it very easy for me to rotate the base to paint the other side. And now as you can see it's on the bench in the warmer part of the workshop. I will leave this for 24 hours for the paint to dry. What are we going to do next? I want to do experiments using slow motion. Hence the title, Slow Motion. Steam engines are capable of running very slowly anyway. So the slow motion thing I only really do to slow the audio down. The slide valve timing of the Stuart Victoria is quite retarded. And that's why the exhaust doesn't chuff very well, it's a very soft beat. At the moment I'm using the camera's super slow motion feature. The only problem is, 
The picture quality is not technically as good as I normally get. The slow motion's okay though. Have a listen to this Stuart 5A. This engine is set for early admission. The valve opens just before top dead centre at each end of the stroke. So you get a short, sharp crack of an exhaust beat. I'll turn the sound up so you can have a listen. This is at 20% normal speed, but the picture quality is not very good. Now I've slowed the video speed on the editor down to 20% and the exhaust beat is different again. So without buying an extremely expensive camera dedicated to getting accurate slow motion, the easiest thing I can do is run the engine slowly to start with. I could record the audio with a different device and sync it all together, but I just don't have the time. Here's the lathe running at slow speed. It isn't really, I've just slowed the video down. I quite like the audio on this clip, it's a really good sound. Lathe operations are generally quite slow in my workshop by default. So normally I speed up the clips when I'm making videos that feature quite a lot of machining, just to save time. So for the moment, the slow motion that I normally get will have to suffice. Here's a shot of me waving at the camera to see what my fingers look like. Yeah, and they look quite okay. Not very blurry at all. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.